Hello, biology students, and welcome to another installment of FOMS Notes on Video. Today's date should be Thursday, April 2nd. This should be day four of what is probably going to be a long line of videos. Uh, today's topic is cellular respiration. So the last three videos dealt with ecosystems, the environment around an organism, which includes all of the living and non-living things. Uh, the second video and third video focus on photosynthesis, which is the plant's ability to take in carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight and produce two things, which we definitely need from them, which is food and oxygen gas. Well, today's video is gonna focus on what we the heterotrophs do for energy. Because photosynthesis is all about taking energy from the sun and making food, which provides energy and building materials for plants. But we need to do the same thing. We need energy, we need building materials. And so we use the process of cellular respiration, cellular respiration to access the energy and materials in our food. So this will be the second section of notes. This is not an outside video today. This is all strictly inside. So let's talk about this process of cellular respiration. Uh, so what you see there are a whole bunch of delicious fruits and uh, vegetables. And I'm pretty sure that's sushi maybe. I don't know, but it looks delicious. Well, that's food. And food is what we take and access things like carbohydrates, proteins and lipids for our building materials but we also access that for energy see we are constantly exchanging energy and nutrients and materials with our environment plants do the same thing they are constantly cycling nutrients we need the nutrients from plants to do for, to do cellular respiration which is simply our mitochondria are eventually going to get involved. Mitochondria are those, those bean-shaped organelles that you find inside cells. And those mitochondria are going to make a whole bunch of chemical energy called ATP. Now, the mitochondria don't break the food down. Breaking down food actually happens in your mouth and then eventually in your stomach and then your intestines. And it goes through this process to where we are going to... Uh, break it down into something simple, which can then go into cells. But the mitochondria though, is what we call the powerhouse of the cell. It's gonna make this chemical energy called ATP, which stands for adenosine triphosphate. Now you don't need to know that, but you do need to know ATP and its role in keeping us alive. Now, regardless if you're a plant, an animal, a fungus or proteist, we all do cellular respiration. Plants, yes, they do photosynthesis to create food, glucose, which they can then break down into energy for themselves. See, plants, they need ATP too. ATP is what we use to power all of our chemical reactions, all the work that happens inside our body. Well, plants need it too, but so do the proteas and so do the fungi. Now, you'll notice that there is one type of life that's absent from that list, and it's bacteria. Bacteria don't have mitochondria. They do not have the capability to produce as much ATP as we do. This is something that just the eukaryotes do. And if you remember from the first semester, eukaryotes are those organisms that have a nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles, and that's what a mitochondria is. So there's the mitochondria. You might realize it. We call it, the, again, the powerhouse of the cell. It's got this really cool bean-shaped structure with this highly folded membrane on the inside, and it's filled with fluid. And here is where we're going to make the majority of our ATP. Uh, now, there is an equation for cellular respiration. Photosynthesis has its own equation, which takes the things that you start with, or maybe you're looking at the things you start with, and then you wind up with the things at the end. You know, you have ingredients and products, or what we call reactants and products. Cellular respiration, well, there's a chemical equation that represents the basic components and what they will eventually turn into. So here is the equation. 
C6H12O6, which is glucose again, mentioned in the previous photosynthesis videos, but we also need oxygen gas. The, the gas that's in the air right now that you're, that you're breathing in is O2, which some of it was produced by plants. Uh, a lot of it was produced by something else. Uh, so you take glucose and you take oxygen gas, you're going to create carbon dioxide, CO2, but you're also going to produce water as waste, which you then breathe out or pee out or number two it out. And then you have chemical energy. That chemical energy is what we call ATP again. See, we need food for two main reasons. We need it for building materials to provide the carbon, the hydrogen, the oxygen, the nitrogen, the phosphorus, all those things that keep us alive, that make us who, up who we are. And then there's energy. We need that food for energy. And cellular respiration produces the energy in the form of ATP. So here is a model. This is a model again because it represents an idea. It represents uh, something happening, something being produced, and as you can see, it goes in a cycle. Because plants play a large role in how we survive. Plants do photosynthesis, energy comes in from the sun, and then it produces organic compounds. Hey, Sarah McFate just closed her rings. Good job, Sarah McFate. YouTube mentioned. But photosynthesis produces organic compounds like glucose or starches. And then we're going to take those organic compounds and that oxygen gas, it's going to go into something we call aerobic respiration, which is what this video is about. It's called cellular respiration. And I'll talk about aerobic later. But after aerobic respiration or cellular respiration happens, it's going to produce energy for us in the form of ATP, but it's also gonna produce some other things. It's gonna produce carbon dioxide and water. And what is happening to the carbon dioxide in the water? If you look at the picture, it goes right back into photosynthesis. So it is a cycle. They help us and we kinda help them. They don't need us. So this thing that is being made, this energy that we call ATP, this is the video, or this is the picture of it up here. Uh, it shows you what elements are in there. You got carbons and oxygens and hydrogens, but you also have phosphorus and nitrogen. These are elements that are found in all life and all ATP. And we make this. We take the glucose and we take the energy on the inside and we help to, we use that to make this molecule ATP. Glucose is extremely important for us. Now, it's not the only thing that we use, but it's the main thing that we use. Now, this ATP, it's pretty darn important. It's what we use to power all of our chemical reactions. So, so let's say that you want to uh, buy something. Well, you're going to use money, right? Money, we give that to them. They give us a little bit of money back. And then maybe you earn money so you can buy more stuff. Well, that's what cellular respiration is doing for us. Cellular respiration produces this stuff, ATP. We call it an energy currency. If I ever want to get anything done, I take some of the ATP and I spend it, and then it provides the energy to do work. For example, you need to repair damaged DNA. You need to replace damaged cells. You need to increase the body temperature. You need work to happen. There's all these things inside our body that require energy. ATP is that thing that we use to make things go. So ATP is extremely important. I'm not going to go over any more specifics about it, but you do need to know that glucose is broken down to make ATP. Now, you saw in the, the model where glucose is one of the ingredients that we need, one of the reactants, but there is another ingredient that we need, and it is oxygen gas. Oxygen gas, extremely important. You know, when you can't breathe, well, we're breathing for a reason. We're trying to get air in, we're trying to get specifically oxygen gas in, and when you can't breathe, bad things happen, and your assignment is gonna deal with that aspect. 
So why do we breathe? We need oxygen gas inside our body. It's used to help make ATP. And if you don't make ATP, and then you don't have the energy to do all the work. And if you're not breathing, you're not breathing, bringing in the oxygen gas, which is used to help make all this ATP. So that's why we don't want to not breathe for a long period of time. You know, some people can hold their breath. You know, I, on average, you can hold your breath for maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and then it starts to get really scary. Well, you know, holding your breath any longer than that, you pass out because you're not getting enough oxygen to your mitochondria, which is used to help make ATP. So oxygen gas is not necessary to breathe. Breathing is the mechanism we use to get the oxygen gas inside us. But we're also going to produce water vapor as waste, which we then release in various ways. Now, the great thing about how our systems have evolved, how life has evolved this strategy to access energy from glucose and make ATP, is that glucose is not the only molecule we use to make ATP. There's all kinds of sugars out there. Uh, glucose is one, but you got maltose, you have galactose, you have lactose, you have fructose, sucrose. All of these sugars can be used to make ATP, but they're not even the only class of molecules that we can use to make ATP. We can also make ATP from proteins and from lipids. So this system of using ATP to power our systems, or you know, everything we do in our body, it's an old evolutionary process that ensures we have enough energy to do all of the things that we need to do as humans. All right, so this is the last thing I'm gonna show you. This, no, not that one. Um, these people are doing, and cats, are doing CPR. Now, there's a reason. It's called, you know, CPR is short for cardial pulmonary resuscitation. So your assignment, and I will help you out if you don't have internet access, if you get the Google Drive, then you will be able to find your answer. You know, why do we do CPR? You know, what are the dangers if we don't do CPR? What are the dangers if we do CPR wrong? What are the dangers if we don't do CPR soon enough? Now, here's what I don't want your answer to be. Death. Obviously, if we don't do CPR, you die. But there are reasons why we want it done correctly, and we want it done quickly, and we want it done continuously. So I will provide you with some information if you don't have um, access to the internet. It will be on a uh, doc that you will be put on your Google Drive. But for the rest of you, I want you to find out the dangers of CPR. I'm not doing CPR. And I want you to add your answer to the Google document that's for the, you know, the homework assignment for this week. Uh, don't turn it in until all questions, all assignments are done. Turn it in at the end of the week after all those assignments are done. So that's all the time I have. Tomorrow, I will do an, an overarching review slash some new information. And that's going to be it for today. If you have any questions, you know how to reach me. Um, I hope you're having a pleasant day or night whenever you're watching this. And I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.